Hello, nerds watching all over the internet. It is Thursday night, March 28th, and we're here for another exciting live edition of Wrestle Rewind. Yahoo! That's right, folks. Another fun Thursday night to talk about all the greatest matches and segments and incredible OMG moments and historical milestones in the world of professional wrestling. And guiding you in this journey is your host. I am Jose Casabona. I am the host of Wrestle Rewind, and I am also the host, the founder, the content manager, and executive producer of the Ravens Flock channel. And on behalf of everybody on this channel, we appreciate all of you tuning in tonight. And joining behind the camera is... The host of the Black Files by a type partner for Wrestle Rewind, a man who puts in all the hours behind all the videos on this channel every single week! An ECW hardcore icon, Mr. Juan Arouz. Wait, when did I... What? <laughs> Thank you for that introduction, Jose. Don't you ever forget the mister. Hey, at least mine are getting shorter. <laughs> yeah, thank you for that. I appreciate that. That means a lot to me, personally, on an emotional level. <laughs> of course, of course. And much like all the other shows on this channel, we are simulcasting on both YouTube and Kick. Hit the subscribe or the follow button on the bottom right corner of your screen. Click the bell icon to enable all the notifications. Leave your questions and comments below. We'll answer as many as we can. And if you wish to go above and beyond... To support the Ravens Flock, then you can become an Inner Flocker. For $4.99 a month, you'll have access to all the perks that comes with our membership. One, tell them! Well, for all the Inner Flockers we've got in our chat, and I know we have plenty, go ahead and show off those lovely membership badges and custom emojis, letting everyone know that you're here to rescue the Ravens Flock from the clutches of late stage capitalism and become full-time YouTubers for your enjoyment and for our sanity. In order for us to continue to make your voice our mission, we wish to uh, do nothing more and nothing less than be full-time streamers, be full-time nerds for a living, and with your kind help and your continuing support, we can and will succeed and achieve that end. You're also get access to members for uh, first and members only content a special discount to our merch store link in the description below and you also get access to us the raven's flock your favorite motley core nerds here to make your voice our mission by providing us your thoughts your input your feedback your ideas on how to better shape the future of this channel to suit your tastes and needs hey up there in the chat nikki bella genie rick vicente guerrero and lisa boo are all up in the chat thank you all for joining us here tonight on our youtube stream and for any lurkers in our kick stream thank you for joining us here as well but pray tell Jose, what exactly do we do here on Wrestle Rewind. Well, I'm glad you asked, Quancho. Here on Wrestle Rewind, we review three of the most exciting professional wrestling programs in North America today. That is WWE's NXT, AEW Dynamite, and TNA Impact. Now, folks, we are one week away from WWE's WrestleMania weekend. How awesome oh is God, that? Oh, God, it's happening. Okay, okay, everybody calm down. Stay calm. <laughs> I'm sorry, stay fucking calm. I am calm. Be calmer. Be calmer. Be calmer than calm. <laughs> it's going to be amazing. It's going to be monumental. It's going to be historical for all. All the right reasons. It's going to be so cathartic for all the wrestling fans all over the world who are going to be watching. And of course, WrestleMania weekend is also a great opportunity for other wrestling promotions to cash in on the on the popularity and the population of the great city of brotherly love. You're damn right. Uh, if I'm not, well, if we're not mistaken, as a uh, uh, the AEW's a uh, 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 redheaded stepchild, uh, uh, step sibling, Ring of Honor is gonna be uh, is gonna be pulling off SuperCard of Honor on Friday the fifth uh, during WrestleMania weekend. And right now, TNA Impact is airing their tapings, which took place at the 2300 Arena in Philadelphia, the cradle, the proverbial uh, crucible of the original ECW. That's right, and. WWE is also gearing up for their NXT pay-per-view event, Stand and Deliver, which will be at the Wells Fargo Center in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Fun fact, Wells Fargo Center was also the same venue where Bray Wyatt made his return to the WWE at Extreme Rules in October of 2022. It was beautiful. It was so beautiful, man. Yeah. Mess in peace, man. Bray Wyatt. God it, hurts. Damn. it hurts to talk about it. Nikki Bella, how dare you? Nikki Bella said that they went ahead and saw... Godzilla X Kong, the new uh, the, uh, the new empire uh, earlier today. How dare you? No spoilers, please. Please, no spoilers. We want to get a chance to watch it ourselves. We want to see the giant monkey and the giant lizard fight even more giant or evil monkeys and giant or evil lizards. That want, we want more of it, and we need the hype. We need to uh, we need to feel the power. We need to feel the energy. We definitely need the, to feel that energy, and thankfully. 
Glitch Energy has got us covered. It is the ideal beverage for all geeks and nerds to keep us revitalized and energized, whether we're doing workouts or 9 to 5 uh, work shifts or playing video games or anything that requires physical activity. It's all good. Damn right, and what Jose was showing off just now was the uh, was his jar of uh, of Glitch's Revive Hydration line, uh, which helps revitalize you with all the electrolytes you need. No caffeine needed for this bad boy, and uh, this uh, and and it's in Jose's favorite flavor of blackberry lemonade because he's still an emo kid from uh, uh, from high school. And if that's not enough, you can also check out Glitch Energy's line of gaming energy. Uh, uh, blends, which uh, which all come with zero sugar, zero carbs, zero calories, and zero crash. But what's the most important part about all of these, Jose? Is that the Glitch Energy f uh, product tastes so damn good. It's like Angel's been saying many, many times. If we like to quote Shaq, if we don't like it, we don't buy it. We like it, and we definitely buying it. And, if, and of course, folks, if you go on to glitchenergy.com and use our promo code FLOCKFUEL, you'll receive a 20% discount on all of your online purchases. Thank you once again to Glitch Energy for partnering with the Ravens Flock. Again, that's glitchenergy.com. Use our promo code FLOCKFUEL to get 20% off. Just remember, we don't have the keys to their building anymore. They changed the locks. They don't want us going anywhere near them. They threatened to file a restraining order. Well, this that is won't... a terrible idea. Well, now, Juancho, that won't stop a man like you now will it i suppose it doesn't <laughs> all right all right all right sponsor over so let's go ahead and get started on the review wancho ring that bell don't mind if i do all right so heading into wrestlemania weekend we're gonna go ahead and talk about uh, this week's edition of wwe nxt one week away from stand and deliver and the show opens up with an incredible one-on-one -on -one encounter as the as the latest defectee of All Elite Wrestling, the Perfect Ten, Sean Spears, goes one-on-one -on -one against Dijak. Okay, so uh, so Mohawk Boy going up against uh, 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 a cop wannabe. There. <laughs> yes, exactly. The Chairman versus the Big Boss Man. There. Man. Man. <laughs> it was such an incredible opening match. Two uh, expert, two expert wrestlers of the game uh, putting on a clinic. The fans of uh, the fans of the Performance Center were loving every second of it. Sean Spears dominating the early part of the match, hitting uh, hitting him with a series of suplexes and hard chops into the corner. And damn, he lit up Dijak's chest like crazy. It was turning pink, like the Starburst pink flavor. I like Starburst pink. I like Starburst pink too. I'm pretty sure Dijak did not like his chest turning Starburst pink, though. Yeah, well, obviously. Well, wouldn't you? Would you? No. Exactly. And, of course, the action spilled to ringside as Sean Spears continues the punish uh, punishment on Dijak, throwing him uh, throwing him to the barricade. But while they were uh, brawling it out, uh, Joe Gacy, who has completely lost all links to sanity, I don't have a screenshot, uh. um, was creeping under the ring apron and stole Sean Spears' steel chair. And what? just went back in. He, like I said, he has become a cartoon character in every form. He and pops out like a cartoon, takes something, and pops back in. And, and pops, and he pops in like a cartoon and pops out. It's is so he fucking weird. Bugs Bunnying? How dare he bugs Bunny? Oh my god, dude, dude, chill out, man. No, don't chill out. Maximum bugs Bunnying. I like Maximum Bugs, Bugs Bunny. Bunny. <laughs> so after some more back and forth action, Dijak was able to uh, was able to regain his footing when they get when they got back from commercial break, lighting up a few chops of his own to Sean Spears, because you know oh, turnabout is all on. is fair play. Yeah, something just happened with the cable there. All right, sorry about that. Go on. Okay, fantastic. So Sean, so so J Dijak was able to turn things around and hit a series of uh, chops to Sean Spears when they got back from commercial break. And uh, even at one, p and then we got a, uh, then we got a series of reversals. Uh, Sean Spears tried to hit the C four onto Dijak. That didn't work. Dijak tried to hit the hard justice choke slam. Sean Spears was able to counter it, but then, uh, but then Dijak leveled him with a spinning big boot, a discus big boot, only to get a two count. Really? Yeah, I know. It's so Dude, weird. Seriously? It was so good. It was such a great. It was such a great encounter. And after some more back and forth action, Dijak finally was able to hit the hard justice. Sean Spears was able to kick out after two, and then it took another bit. It, it took another super kick to Sean Spears' face before hitting Sean Spears with the feast your eyes finisher to pin and win. Your winner, Dijak. Ah, uh, hell, man. 
Well, uh, I certainly hope Sean Spears <laughs> won't take it too hard over here. Uh, under the circumstances, he was, uh, after all, uh, going to try and cheat his way to win. And, uh, of course, we cannot abide that, now can we? That is true, because during the match, Sean Spears was trying to look for the steel chair, but he notices that it was gone. And then after the match was over, he saw Joe Gacy on top of the announce table, and he's uh, and he's uh, rocking the steel chair like it's uh, some sort of guitar right in front of, uh, right in front of Spears. Really? So Asshole! Very much asshole. Now, <laughs> so, th 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 thank you, K-Storm. If you didn't hear her, she said, it's funny as hell, though. Now, I will say this about Sean Spears. Normally, I would be upset about this, but Sean Spears, he's a very reliable wrestler. And he and if you put him in, he's kind of like uh, in the same level as uh, Mr. Perfect, Kurt Henning. If you put him in the ring, you're going to get a great match out of him. Really? You, like okay, you're 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 saying Sean Spears is uh, uh, Kurt Hennig levels of worker? Yes. Really? Yes. Say that is extremely high praise. That is that that's like that's like. Are you serious? I'm not kidding around, man. I am not I, like I am a Sean Spears fan since his. Uh, uh, well, I've been a Sean Spears fan since he was Ty Dillinger in his earlier run, and since he made his uh, resurgence in AEW feuding with Cody Rhodes until they inevitably phased him out. Yeah, and, well, we know how all that happened. Vicente that... Guerrero in the chat uh, is letting us know, best thing about WrestleMania is happening at least this year. Sasha and Bayley will not be losing the women's tag belts on one to two weeks' notice. Ah, come Ow. on, dude. Why you gotta reopen that wound? Ow! Ugh. Ugh. Joe Gacy waiting under the ring and interfering occasionally is more like a horn swoggle. And ah! No, somebody gave. Uh, if that's the case, then somebody gave Horn Swoggle the uh, the the what do you call the the mega uh, the the, uh, the the power mushroom from Super Mario Brothers. That being said, getting back to the discussion, this decision made sense. Dijak, of course, is a. Uh, oh, are we good? Uh, doesn't look it. Give me a second, folks. Give us just a moment, over folks. Here. Bear with us. We're we're. <sighs> It's it's yeah, it's it's been a thing. It's it's a thing. Don't worry. Easy fix. <laughs> yeah, no worries, man. One line of dialogue. Like, oh uh, my we've goodness. invented that, you know, whatever device. Please stand by. Man, oh man. <laughs> Philadelphia. You know, I gotta say something. You know what? Because they can still hear me, right? Yes, the mics okay. are still hot. Yeah, you know. Um, because I'll be honest. Like one of my big aspirations is that. Oh my that, god, Jose, uh, get that out of your butt! Uh, well, I, I, listen, I'm I'm trying. I. Your goodness is a. What is the matter with you? Listen, there's an itch. There's an itch, and I'm trying to scratch it. But that's not how you do it, man. Look, that's not how you roll. All right, just give me there. I'm trying to mm, get to the right spot. Ugh. God dang it, man! This Ugh. is embarrassing. How dare you? Ugh. In front of my chicken tendies. Ugh. The nerve. The unmitigated gall. Yeah, I know, I know. I'm gross. I, I, I am mean, severely disappointed in you, Jose. Hey, man, it's only a crime if you get caught, and nobody yeah. saw it. <laughs> so that was a weird hiccup but getting back to my earlier point now I um, remember. Yeah. yeah but getting back to my earlier point Dijak winning makes sense he after all is vying for the NXT North American Championship and he will get a chance to compete for the title against Oba Femi and Josh Briggs in a triple threat match at NXT Stand and Deliver God almighty, that's going to be crazy. So a nice little triple threat match. All right, well, congrats to Dijak. God my, help us all. My one knock is that Sean Spears is pivoting to a slower feud with Joe Gacy. Now it's his turn to put up with the crazy? Hey, you know what? Crazy's fun. We can handle crazy around here in the Ravens flock. I mean, have you met Angel? Have you? Well, yes. Then you should know. We well, can handle crazy. Well, I live with you, and I think you're a couple of bar uh, levels higher than uh, Angel in terms of crazy. You take that back. That's an insult to Angel. <laughs> I think he'll agree with me. <laughs> All right, well, no, let's... He wouldn't. He would, uh, he would disagree vehemently. If he said to saying, for fuck's sake, Joe Gacy read my comment and hijacked the screen. Ah! You jerk. How dare you, Joe Gacy? All right, now let's move on to the exciting match of the night. And but like Tony D'Angelo said... He's he's all in his business. He's all about creating opportunity. So Tony D'Angelo sends his underboss Channing Stax Lorenzo to go one on one against the NXT champion Ilya Dragunov. Really? Yes. Okay. So, okay, so uh, if, number one, we're moving him away from just calling him Stax to his full name Channing. Lorenzo. Oh no, he's still Stax. I just refuse no, to call no, him to Stax. No, Jose. No, the 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 familia, whatever the fuck they're calling themselves, they're. Uh, the the, the graphic ch so showed the uh, name change in there too. 
Oh yeah, that's true. Yes. So yeah, they're they're changing the name uh, and changing it back to it. It's like they're they're trying to get ahead of the whole Pete Dunn Butch bullshit that they did with uh, uh, with him uh, when uh, when Pete Dunn came up to the main roster. Oh, you mean the 2022 uh, multicolored midlife crisis of NXT 2.0? Yeah, that. Yeah, we're trying to phase that. We're trying to phase that out completely, folks. Good. <laughs> but, that was a horrible, horrible mess, and we shouldn't ever talk about it again. This we match talk on about this match. This match, on the other hand, was definitely the opposite. It was amazing, and it was so good to see Channing uh, Channing Lorenzo actually like getting a lot of offense in against the NXT champion, cutting him off at every turn. Having studied uh, uh, Ilya Dragunov for a long time, he uh, he was able to reverse a lot of his moves during this match. And at one point, um, I did show this footage to Juan, and we did have a little discussion of it. There was a pivotal point during this match where Channing Lorenzo st stomped onto the right hand of Ilya Dragunov. Direct Directly on the digits. Directly Ow. on the digits, and it looked like Dragunov may have hurt his middle finger. I'm not going to do the thing, because that would be silly, but he but hurt... Basically, it looked like his finger was, like... Bent what? awkwardly, like... It, it, it twisted in an awkward angle kind of thing? Yeah. Does that yeah. make sense? I yeah. Don't know. It does make sense. It does make sense. And he and for the rest of the match, coming back from commercial break, Ilya Dragunov had to continue and wrestle through the pain of that finger. Oh my goodness. The last time I saw something that awkward was... I'm trying to remember. No, I remember now. It was NXT Vengeance Day last year where Dijak twisted his middle finger wrestling Wesley... And even before that was in the Blade Runner movie, even though I know it was a movie, but Harrison Ford got his digits twisted by the bad guy. Ouch! Well, not really a bad guy, by uh, Roy Batty there, played by, um, shoot, not Garrett Hedlund, what's his, um, anyway, uh, yeah, no, Roy Batty, the, 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 the replicant who, uh, had tears and rain, there. Shoot. Okay, fine, but the point is... Ah! Rucker Howard, there we go, Rucker Howard. Rucker Howard, yeah. Still, seeing twisted digits is a very, very weird visual for me to it's take a, it. It's a, it's an ick. It's an, it's a yuck. It's a, it yucks are yum of watching pro wrestling. But it's very yucky. But I was still able to enjoy the match as Ilya Dragunov hit his comeback and slammed Channing Lorenzo with a power bomb in the middle of the ring before finally hitting him with the torpedo Moscow to pin and win. Your winner. Ilya Dragunov, the Mad Dragon. Not bad, not bad at all. Uh, obviously, uh, Channing Lorenzo, uh, I suppose, with them moving him with his full name in there, not just Stax, uh, because fucking Vince McMahon does, and didn't know how to fucking uh, uh, control himself and just wanted single names and something uh, memorable like Butch or Fury or some bullshit. Uh, no. No, no, no. We're full naming these guys because we want to know who they are, who they are meant to be. Exactly. And his personality and stuff. Can I and say something? Yeah. I was a fan of the full names of Antonio Cesaro before they shortened it to Cesaro and, and Alexander Alex Rusev. Before they shortened it to Rusev. I mean, yeah. I mean, but that's just me. You know, I mean, I'm sure it's not everybody's cup of tea. I don't know. What do you think? I think we should continue on because we're on a bit of a roll here. Yes, we are. Let's go ahead and get to the absolute best video segment of the night. And this is a video, an entire video package that was split up in three parts called Prime Target. Trick versus Mellow. The entire video that highlights the rivalry of the story of Trick Williams versus Carmelo Hayes. And this was produced so well. It looked like something out of fucking ESPN. It looked good. It looked wonderful. Could it you call it sports-based presentation? Yes! Yes, I could! We got to see the guys training. <laughs> I hope you folks... We got to see the guys exercising. We got to see other people who are professional wrestlers, who are other people in the WWE, who have experience and who have like uh, opinions about this stuff, give their take about this. That's right. We got several superstars weighing in on their thoughts on the situation. We had Randy Orton, WWE Hall of Famer Booker T. We had Cody Rhodes, and of course, CM Punk, giving, uh, giving their thoughts and two cents on the rivalry between between Car uh, Trick Williams and Carmelo Hayes. Yeah, hey folks in Jacksonville, you better be paying attention to, uh, to how this is uh, sports uh, sports based wrestling is done sports right. Sports based presentation. Sports based presentation <laughs> done right. <laughs> Got to love it. I, abs I, I I I I absolutely love it and uh the, it was just very well produced. It was just like oozing with like cinematic value and it looked like something like I said that it belongs on ESPN and that's how you fucking 
break the mold when it comes to the production method and production uh, 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 value for uh, the WWE and especially breaking it in from the ground up at NXT. Very well done. Also, if you sent in the chat, only calling talent by one name is not always badass, despite what WWE creative or uh, think or Visek Man used to think. Exactly. Yeah. My personal my personal favorite about the whole package is when they actually shot footage of Trick Williams going to Philadelphia and meeting his family over there, meeting his uncle, and we got testimonials from his friends who used to be coaches for him, like bo- former boxing coaches, NFL coaches. Like Trick Williams has personal history in Philadelphia, and this will be a great like homecoming event for him at Stand and Deliver. Now, my one tiny little knock on the video package only it's only a tiny one and that's more of a visual knock is that there's this one scene where it shows trick williams and uh, carmel hayes in the desert and then out of nowhere the fucking uh, city of philadelphia comes up right from the ground and i'm looking at this and i'm like wait a minute when did this turn into inception you know what? That fucking looks cool okay like i said make it look like nfl espn shit Make it look like that. It it gets people. It gets the the, the coding of like the of uh, the messaging to the freaking audience. Look, I, I I never said I hated it. I Look, liked it. Don't I'm, you dare! No, 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 listen. It looks wonderful. Listen it's to me, Tino. Escucha me. Hear my words, Juan. I like it. It's just giving me that vibe of like. So when is Leonardo DiCaprio gonna come in and stroll like that internet meme that he did? No. <laughs> God damn it. Oh, still, excellent video package. I loved it. The last time they did a prime target video was between Braun Breaker versus Carmelo Hayes last year. They also did it for Adam Cole, Bebe versus Kyle O'Reilly back in 2021. These prime target videos are amazing to watch and definitely worth uh, the time invested. And also, I'm going to bring this up right now. It's official. Carmelo Hayes versus Trick Williams will be the official main event for NXT Stand and Deliver. Gotta love that, and uh, I'm really happy to see how well they're treating this rivalry. It's it's gonna be nice. It's gonna be so much fun to watch uh, 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 when we watch it live. Of course, and you know, <coughs> and this and this is just an example. You know, sometimes when it comes to wrestling, sometimes there are certain programs and rivalries that are bigger than the uh, top better champion, than the title. Better than the title. I mean, not and it, better, bigger. It's bigger than the title, and it's not to diminish the, the 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 top championship at all. It's just you know the weight and the 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 layers in the storyline, right? Right. Yeah, it, 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 was, it was fucking in, in, in incredible. I loved it. All right. Now let's get into the meh match of the night. And this was an open challenge laid out by the returning Lola Vice. All right. So booty shaking, popping and locking uh, Lola Vice over here. Uh, who answered her call? Yep. She made, she got on the mic and she issued an open challenge. And, one per- and there's a, you know something, there's a list of women on NXT that could easily have answered the call and uh, uh, deserve an opportunity to go one out to trade uh, 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 hands or feet with Lola Vice. Um, you know, I'm just thinking off the top of my head. You know, maybe there's Gigi Dolan. You know, she could use a little bit of a resurgence. Uh, maybe there's Ren St. Clair. She's doing pretty good. Or, you know, I'm just thinking about other wrestlers. Who was that... it? Go ahead and show them. All right. It was Natalia. Natty? From, from Monday Night Raw. Goddamn, Natty! Natty Neidhart up in the house. You're in trouble now, woman. Holy shit. I'm going to give my thoughts on this, on why I think that this is kind of mixed, but I'll talk about the match. The match by, by the way, the match by no means is a bad match. It was actually a very great encounter, and Lola Vice definitely brought the fight to the to the legend to the daughter uh, to the daughter of the Anvil, hitting her, uh, hitting uh, Natalia with a series of roundhouse kicks and other martial arts kicks moves uh, in the ring. Sorry, no, I, just this freeze frame. With Lola Vice over here, the way she's got her hand out, uh, her left uh, her left arm out for balance or whatever. Uh, I don't know why. It just reminded me of that silly, stupid ass thing that Cody Rhodes used to say on the Indies with uh, when he was with uh, with the Elite. Oh yeah, what did he say? Make us say, oh. <laughs> that's the face she kind of has on there. Oh, you dork! Know. Also, thank you so much, Genie Rick, for dropping that dollar ninety nine super sticker. Thank you very much. We really appreciate that. Thank you so much. We appreciate your continued support, and it's a purple heart that says thanks. 
Thank you so Aww. much. And thank you for sharing the, the, the tweet, by the way. Indeed. Natalia was able to get some ground oh, back in, back in the game by locking it uh, her, uh, by locking in her submission holds, as you can see right here. Natalia locks in the abdominal stretch onto Lola Vice. Just uh, one of the many uh, series of moves in her arsenal. Um, at one point, however,